know, as in, you know, by Jesus, Yeshua even said, even, it is by your beliefs, by your faith, that you are healed. He didn't do that. He just said, because you believe. Because you believe. So that's how powerful our beliefs are. You know, our beliefs are so strong. If, if they hold firm in our core, they make that thing manifest, become true, just like that. You know, whether it's for our benefit or our demise. But more we come into the knowledge of who we are, we know how to begin to you know, say, cast the spells and begin to stand on our square firmly so we can get the results that we wish to get. And again, with my journey is, I came through, I, I was challenging them mainly with the right to travel. You know, I don't know how many of you heard the stories, but uh, there was at one point, there was a time of us, we actually had Moorish tags. You know, brother, one of our Moorish brothers, Lamont L. Uh, he uh, printed some tags, and he had some Moorish tags, and I was one that had a little red car with Moorish tags on it. I bought the car uh, from another Moorish brother of mine, gave him some fiat, he gave me the title. I put the title in the glove box, and that was it. I, I actually started out with the USDOT tag. One of our brothers, Mahif, you know, assisted us with, you know, getting a USDOT license. So I got, you know, I'm a USDOT registered, so I got a USDOT license plate, vanity plate, then I got the Moorish plate. But bottom line is, Yes, they would pull me over. Yes, they would, at first, yeah, no problem. But then, after a while, they said, we gotta stop, do something, so I began getting me tickets, I had to go to court. At one time, I had like five char uh, five cases at one time, um, D.C., P.G. County, and Baltimore, right? Um, but I would drive, and I would navigate, yeah, <laughs> right. Travel, right? I would travel to the courthouse and park where there was an open space. I mean, it would be official vehicles. It really didn't matter. And a little red car, Moorish tax, but it didn't tow the car. So then I'll go inside, and woo, 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 yeah. stalemate, leave, and come back. For a while, that was just it was fun. But then after a while, I get tired because I, I have other things I want to do. So, right. That's one of the reasons why I kind of said, let me just slow down from going directly at them like that. And I really began to embrace the metaphysical path. But um, amongst that, what happened was, I was, they was pulling me over so much, and I was started, you know, giving the affidavits out to them. At one point, the um, first, uh, first time it happened was US, uh, the Maryland Tunnel Command in Baltimore, right? I shot my affidavit, Maryland, um, State, Maryland State Department shot me something saying, okay, you can't go out the Mar US Maryland's attorney's office shot me um, a letter saying, I can't go out a police officer the way that I'm going out to him from the private side. I sent him, an I sent him a bill. Because, you know, when I was riding around, I had a, a, a cough sheet. So if you pull me over, hey, what's happening? You know, probable call, woo the woo the woo. Here, you know, if longer than five minutes, this is what you're going to be charged. And it was an entire package, right? So they violated, I sent him an affidavit, this is my. This is my bill, this is what, you know. Got to the point, like I say, the Maryland, um, uh, U.S. Attorney for Maryland got involved with. So I got them involved, then next thing I know, the FBI came and wanted to talk to me. The reason why, because on my affidavits, I'm putting out there, this is a violation of color law violations, bottom line. It's all color law, color authority. And they actually have a task force that deals with the color law violations. You know, they even have a, um, a form that you can actually fill out. I've used a form sometimes too. It's color law violations form. Warning, you've been, you know, Google FBI laws and everything down there. So they came and talked to me, right? Long story short, we sat for about two and a half hours. I mean, we just, just dialogue. And, hey, you know, here's a uh, treaty of peace and friendship. You know, blah, blah. I'm just, it's, it's history. It's facts. Long story short, they say, look at uh, Mr. Material. Looks like, you know, you know what you're doing. Everything you're doing is correct. But the reason why we're here is because not only the task force, but because that affidavit, um, I had them in default for like $75 million. But they was like, because the amount is so much, they will come after you for like, they think I'm trying to retaliate or get back or to, you know, intimidate a police officer. So they can't have that. And lo and behold, after this was like in 2013, so three years in, I'm going hard at it. And lo and behold, a lot of things started happening. I, I, I got affidavits going there and so many people in default, but you know, I really got tired of it because you gotta pay for the mailings, you gotta pay for the filings. So I just slowly began to kind of wean myself back and say, okay, let me take a different approach to this. That's when I began to get more into the metaphysical aspect. 
So what I'm looking at now is, okay, I know about the circle of seven. Or at least I, at this point, I heard about the circle of seven. Trying the circle of seven. What is that circle of seven? Well, so the circle of seven is with that. You know, most of you call it like the seven chakras, the seven stairs of heaven, seventh gate, seven days of the week, right? The zodiac, the, uh, the, the zodiac constitution also is one of the things I know what you already talked about, you know, the seesaws. The zodiac constitution and the circle of seven go hand in hand. Because even though we talk about the seven chakras, there are 12 zodiacs. And we are a manifestation of all. All the 12 zodiacs is in us, They're like the seven chakras. So once I began to do that, I have a staff over here, so I have the crystals and jewels. So I began to say, okay, there's a different way to go about this and going directly at them, right? So I began to say, well, hmm, how could I strategically cast these spells in such a way where, or about not just live my life without really going directly at them like I was. So I just made the transition to just me and Porto over on the quiet side. And um, I know we have another brother here to speak, but I just want to kind of open up now for any questions uh, about anything I said so far about you know, my experience. And like I said, how I just, just go at them and, uh, you know, but bottom line is, is, is real. That, that's my whole point. My testimony is, is this stuff is real. Right, go ahead. Are you interested, are you uh, planning to produce any literature? <laughs> produce any literature? Write books, newspaper articles? Yeah, uh -huh. actually, yeah. Um, I do have a. Do you want any distribution? Yeah, I'm glad you asked. Um, That's my thing, brother. Right, right. Beautiful. Um, we just started a newsletter um, like two months ago. The second one was out this past month. It's called the, um, the It. Like the shit, but the it. And the it, IT, it stands for Indigenous Times. So it's the Indigenous Times uh, news, monthly, you know, online newsletter that just kind of says the same events that's going on, what we do in our community. Because it's all about unity in the community. Because, like I say, it is a movement. So that's what I'm doing so more so now. It's like, okay, what can I do to help? Yeah, go ahead. Um, what, what about putting some of your experiences and some of the information in the newsletter? Are you a movie? So that you can educate right. hundreds of thousands of people <laughs> and millions. <laughs> I can help you with the distribution. That's my thing. All right, cool. We need to talk about that then. Yeah, that's so it. It's, it's a done deal. Right, right. It's, so I ain't no more talking about that. News that it is. My experience and what I know is going down. Like I said, the FBI, just one thing. I mean, uh, DC Bar Council came out to me for practice law without a license. I shot them an affidavit in three days. Boom, shut them down. They, they had a little European call me. Excuse me, you want to know if you still practice law without a license? Uh, I sent you my affidavit. Everything I said was in the affidavit. I'm not in your jurisdiction. In fact, no one has everything. You know, no one has law to practice law. Just ate them up. These affidavits work. That's why when you cast your spells, all it takes is the right casting of your spell with your belief from the ground on your square. They'll say, okay, yeah. Just like this, affidavit just simply says, "This is my word of truth." So if you if you believe, if you have the alignment, okay, I, I hear, I got the information, I believe, and you go forth with the affidavit, you know, right? My word should not come back void because I am that I am is not myself, Lord, and Master. Right, that's right. Give it up for Brother Chef. And what, I'm, what I'm telling you is, I seen everything this brother did, man. I'm telling you. And he was awesome. I seen all the stuff, how they harassed him firsthand. I seen all the stuff they was doing to him. And he didn't even let it bother. Of course, sometimes he got locked up. But that ain't matter to him. He called me many times, man. I'm in, I'm, I'm in jail, man. And he kept going at it. You know, powerful brother. I'm telling you. So, hey, look, let's give it up for Brother Cujo. He's coming up next. Who's your companion name? Islam. 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 Peace, Marcy. Peace, peace. How's everybody doing? Good, brother. Good. I just want to um, say it's, a, it's an honor to be here. Um, I made the trip from Canaan Land to do a lecture in Philadelphia with Brother Seth and Rabe. That was on, um, on Saturday. And um, we just came to D.C. today to do the, the tour, see all the, the Moorish history around here. Um, and I just want to um, put it on the record that it's a real, it's something real. 
Yes, sir. Right? And, I, and, and we're saying from from what you so-called call Canada, we got Moors up there, turbans and fezes are doing the same thing that, like what the brother's doing, right? Exercising right to travel, challenging jurisdiction of courts, doing the same things that you all hear the master teachers come up here and, and demonstrate, right? Um, one of the things that we have to, to take into high consideration is Noble Drew Ali. Can't leave Noble Drew Ali out of anything that you do because he's the foundation as to why we do what we do, right? Um, the reason why we're, we're uh, making sure that people put their focus on Noble Drew Ali because it's mandatory that that's something in the forefront because I'm, I'm the Grand Sheik of the temple, the first temple in Canaan land. And the teachers that we came up under taught us the same thing. Don't forget about Noble Drew Ali. Don't think that you're the man and all that stuff because you beat up on some judges or whatever. It doesn't really go down like that. It's always the higher forces working through you. It's not you per se because you have the knowledge, because you study and all that stuff. It's always the unseen forces that are working through us because we, we are, you know, man, man is mine. So we are just conduits. We're just vessels that the higher forces work, work through. Like we were talking with one of the elders, um, Brother Nabi last night, and he was talking about um, in the Quran, how it talks about how the, how God is God made the statement or God was having a conversation with the devil and told the devil that even your people belong to me. So don't get it twisted that you know you're the devil, you have influence on people, and you know those are your people. Your people are also my people. They're just diverted, their attention's going in the wrong direction. Right? Because, you know. Devil, I made you, so don't get it twisted, right? So we're we're the vessels, and our duty is to make sure that we put Noble Juali up front, regardless of what anybody says, regardless they want to say he plagiarized people or he's dressing like whatever like that. We don't want to hear anything that those people are saying. We're not giving giving that any type of attention, because without that man doing what he did. From 1913 to 1929, we wouldn't be here talking about we're Mars today. <coughs> because he's the only one that came and told us that we have a nationality, told us that we have a birthright, told us that we have a flag, told us that we're a nation, <laughs> named the nation, gave us historical documented facts that we can go research to recognize that the nation's real, right? gave us a holy book. In the holy book, gave us the lessons for us to raise from our lower self to our higher self so we can be deific man and woman and manifest what we're supposed to manifest through thought. Nobody else did that. Nobody else did that. Everybody else played the game that they were the ones that brought us the whatever, and they're the ones that did this, and they're the ones that did that. And all those people said nothing about Noble Juali. They kept his name out their mouth. And we know now that they did that because they were working for the other side to make sure that we stay deaf, dumb, blind. And all it's gonna take is, is us. We don't need no 50,000 people out there proclaiming their nationality to exercise this. If he can do it as an individual, and then brother could do it as an individual, and sister could do it as an individual, and then this little sister, she's gonna to go to school and tell them, no, nah, sorry, you know what I mean? I'm exempt from vaccinations. You guys don't, you guys can't vaccinate me. That's right. Not because her mom said, or her dad said, or whatever like that, because she knows about her nationality and birth rights, and knows that those people don't have jurisdiction to put no needle in them. And to stand up and actually put that on the record to these people. Right? No different than with Sister Sela even, working in the school. Right? Inspiring the young people to think differently. All it, all it takes is the Moors that are active to make things happen. Don't worry about Moors who aren't doing anything. 
Don't worry about passive Mars. Definitely don't worry about dirty Mars, right? Don't worry about the religious-sized Mars who, you know, it's all about the temple, stay in the temple, carry your fez in a bag to the temple and all that. That's not what this is about, right? Drew Ali told us to make sure that we be ourselves. That, that's a, that's a, a divine instruction by the prophet. Mars, be yourself. And once we be ourselves, we would be able to see things manifest. And the best way that we can be ourselves is as Mars who are active, be united. Just like we said, like, this is not something that was planned. This is just, you know what I mean? Brother Ali is my brother. I'm from Canaan land, said, yo, you know what I mean? You're here, you know, talk to the people. Well, that's unity. But then the people are going to say, oh, there's no unity amongst the Moors. I don't want nothing to do with that. But there's unity. He's out here. I'm in Canaan land. <coughs> How far Canaan land is from here? And as soon as, the, as soon as I came in the door, he came in after and said, yo, well, you know, you have to go up and talk for a couple minutes. <laughs> that was it. No questions asked. That's unity. And we, and we have that. We have that. We just have to recognize it. Because a lot of times we don't because our, our concepts are being diverted by people out there who are trying to make this seem like a mockery. People who are trying to make this seem like, you know, it's not real. But just today when we were, when we were at the Library of Congress, European, mm -hmm. European lady who's Jewish walked up on the moors. Well, the fence that you got on or whatever? sat down there building with her for 40 minutes. I'm building with her because she knew who she was. She knew, you know, she accepted the fact that she's Jewish. You know, we didn't go there, Tazars and all that stuff. You know what I mean? We kept it light with her. You know what I mean? And she was very interested in finding out more information about what this is about. Because it's not something that is, is common. Like it's not something common. And she came to us. We didn't go force ourselves on her or anything like that. She came to us. She approached us. Why? Because we had on our national headwear. And she recognized that, oh, hey, you, so I need to talk to those guys. <laughs> She's saying, I hope that, I hope people see you guys around here and ask you guys questions because you have seem very knowledgeable about your history and all that. This is a Jewish lady at the Library of Congress. After that, went outside, standing outside, European again. <laughs> Even though there's all these Asiatics walking around, no, not one of them questioned. Actually, there was one, there was one at the um, American Indian um, Museum that he was doing security or whatever. And when we're leaving, he's like, you guys, you guys Hebrew Israelites? No, no, we're not, we're not that, we're Moorish Americans. Oh, all right. You know what I mean? Gave us all daps and all that. You know what I mean? Honors to you, you know what I'm saying? Because this is something that inspires people. If we look at it from the perspective of the amount of people's day that we made today, just by them seeing us walking up and down whatever street that was where all those stuff is. Right? They had um they had the place shut down because Joe Biden was driving through and all that stuff. And you know, we we're just walking. You know what I mean? People not even paying attention to what's going on on the street. People are looking at what's going on, but they're seeing fezzes or whatever like that. They're turning around. They want to see what, what is this? We're the ones that were getting the attention. Europeans coming up talking about, oh, nice fez, and then go about their business. But Asiatics not. So we have a, we have an obligation to be who we are. Because us being who we are inspires people. We might not think so because we already know, we already have this information. We already know what this is about. But the individuals who who 
also know but can't tell who have all this all this um, um, gratitude and appreciation for who we are and want to get it out but they can't because all they see around them is Negro black colored people when they see a more they come out of their shell right and again with that Jewish lady she was inspired to go research because we're telling her well you know what well, you're calling Indian that's not Indian that's Bureau of Indian Affairs or whatever they're not the real indigenous people those people have fake treaties and whatever like that sold land that's not theirs to people in order to get us classified as Negro black color and then she knew that everybody who was classified as Negro black colored wasn't that because that's not real. She knew that. Which again stresses the point that Noble Jewali was right. This is from a European that's a Jew. Fake Jew. <laughs> right? But she knew that we're not Negro black colored people. And we sat down there, talked to this lady for 40 minutes in the Library of Congress. Just, just standing there, just in the hall, just, just building. And all the people with their suits or whatever like that, back and forth, all they can do is just <laughs> walking by staring, right? Just walking by staring. And we're just soaking it all up because we already know, you know what I mean? That our birthright is something that when we display it, 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 it gives other people reason to live. It gives other people reason to know that things aren't as bad as it seems. Because the more, because they already know about our history, they already know our obligation, they already know that we brought Europe out of the Dark Ages, they already know that we're the custodians of the ancient comedic culture and all that stuff. So they're just sitting down waiting for the Moors to be themselves. And once the Moors be themselves, we'll start seeing things changing. But the Moors are only going to be themselves in the proper context when they recognize Nobu Juali and put that man on a pedestal and honor him. Right? Because people don't honor him except Moors. Don't think Farrakhan doing Savior's Day put his picture on some banner that that's honor. That's not no honor. Because he's still calling people black when he knows better. Right? Don't think all these, these Garveyites, they honor Noble Juali because, you know, they might mention his name or say, oh, Islam to Moors or whatever. Don't think people honor Moors because they got Moors on, more on their t-shirt or something like that, but they're calling themselves black. They don't honor Moors. And they don't honor Moors because Moors don't stand up for what they should be standing up for. We got, we got the principles. Love being the first principle that we're supposed to pass that on to everybody that we meet. Doesn't matter whether they're whatever. Everything that we should do, even if we slap somebody, it's out of love that I slapped you. Don't get mad. <laughs> it's out of love that I did that. And we let them know, that's why I did that. It's out of love, don't get mad, right? It's something that had to be done, but it's done out of love because that's first principle and anything that we do is out of love, right? Um, some stories about Canaan land. We've, um, one of the brothers had, um, was going to New York. He stopped, he used, uh, he was traveling with, you know, conveyance driving, whatever, right? Went to the border, he missed a court date, they had a warrant for him. So they're like, sorry, you can't go to New York, we're gonna have to send you back or whatever. He's like, cool, no problem. They put on the handcuffs and all that, sent him back. When they got to the police station, police told them, somebody needs to talk to you. These guys come up, call CSIS, right? 
Canadian secret intelligence services, who you guys call FBI or whatever, came to him, dropped the thing down in front of him. Amari L. Bay, we know that you when he starts going into, you know, Moorish information. The brother, when he went to the border, had a passport with a straw name on it. When he went to the border, he had a passport with a straw name. Not free national name, straw name. But when the suits came to check him, they're talking to him in his free national name. Right? Had everybody's stuff in, in the file. Knew everybody, he knew who the Grand Chief was, knew who the Treasurer was, knew who the Secretary was, which was Brother Amari, knew where our temple was, knew when we do classes, knew what our YouTube stuff was, knew stuff on YouTube, was referencing things that we referenced in classes to him. Let him know when his next court date was, took off the cuffs, sent him on his way. Then he went to court, and then everything was dismissed before he even went in there. Now, we think that is because when they did the search, they pulled out passport and nationality card. So, you know, now they have to pick one that they're going to deal with. Which one are you going to deal with? You're going to deal with him in the straw name, or are you going to deal with him in a national name? If they deal with him in a straw name, they know that's human trafficking, color of law, and they're going to be responsible. If they deal with him in free national name, they can take the straw stuff, sweep it under the rug, and because remember, when he went to the court, the stuff was already dismissed. He didn't have to go through the process of doing anything. So this is something that's real. But it's only real. And, and that's an individual who holds noble Juali to high regards. Because he has three children and he teaches them about noble Juali, you know what I mean? Reading the Quran before going to bed and stuff like that. Things of that nature is how he deals with his sons. That his sons are going to school and the teacher is going to say, go to the blackboard. And they're going to say, no, that's not blackboard, it's green. Why are you calling green board blackboard to the teacher? And it's only because of what they're getting at home. So because he Holds Noble Juali in high regard, the unseen forces, and he has multiple examples of situations. Like multiple examples of situations. Him going to family stuff and people seeing him in fezes and breaking down in tears, crying that this guy knows who he is. Oh my gosh, he knows who he is. Older people running up to him. Oh, how, where do you get a fez from and how do you know about fezes and how do you know that that's your culture and all that stuff he has multiple experiences right and again when we say that we're Canaan land we're just a little bit further north we're still North America there's been highwaymen that stop us that try to tell us that Canada is not part of North America. Well, Canada, well, you know, we put our nationality card. Oh, no, we can't use that. How come? Because this is United States of America. Well, Canada is part of the United States. No, no, Canada is not part of the United States of America. We can't accept this. We need the nationality. We need um, the tax exempt card from the status Indians. We can't accept that. Yeah, what? But this is which lets us know about when you do your research, you find out about Canada being founded in 1867 under an act. Mm -hmm. And that in the Articles of Confederation, which is before 1867, Canada acceded to everything in the Union. 
which is the United States of America Constitution in Canada. And then, you know, when you see just the other day, um, the new so-called Prime Minister went to visit Barack Obama. And then when they were on the little balcony or whatever like that, the wife of the Prime Minister, when they were saying bye, gave everybody, mm. 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 right? Now, we just say that signals that they're sending to let whoever knows know that they know. And why wouldn't they know? Because since 2008, we've been sending those people writs and stuff like that. So it's not like they don't know. They might have to keep it secret that they know, but trust me, all these people know. And after going to DC today, these people can't convince me that they don't know. When we go back over there, they're not gonna be able to convince me that they don't know. If they know who Barack Obama is, then you definitely know who Moors are. Because they all been over there and seen statues on buildings with fezzes and turbans. You can't tell me that you've never seen those. You can't tell me that you haven't seen all those, all those um, um, symboliography and um, um, history of religion, history of whatever books in Thomas Jefferson's library and all that stuff. For a fact, I know that they know. And the fact that we know, we have to trust in what we know. We don't have to believe anymore. Noble Drawley already got rid of the belief and the faith. We, we, we can be fruition masters. We don't have to guess. We don't have to believe or think that this is whatever. We actually can exercise. And we have to. Because it's that time right now. Like it's the time of the Moors right now. All these movies coming out, they're talking about Moors and movies and stuff like that. Trust me, it's time of the Moors right now. Right? Like we're saying, people go into court, yeah, there's, you know, some people are going to get hemmed up. Some people are going to have situations. It might not necessarily be because of, you know, them doing wrong things as far as the information. Their energy might just be in the wrong place. If your energy's off, this won't work either. Yeah. Which is which is why there's Holy Quran of Moral Science Temple. Which is why there's crystals and copper and Buddha beads and all the other stuff that the brother was talking about. Because all these things are supposed to line us up so that when we step, we step left foot first, just like they taught us to do in ancient Kemet. Left foot first, trample down the evil as you move forward. If you're stepping right for first, you already know that you're, you're off balance. That's why these guys say with their stuff, left, right, left, right. Mm -hmm. yeah, right, left, right, left. Mm -hmm. That's off balance. So we're at that place right now. We're at the cusp of blowing this thing wide open, right? It's, it's, it's at that place right now. We're there, we're at the line. All we have to do is just step over the line and this thing's over. And, and again, this is just for mores that are active, mores that study, mores that are studious, mores who know themselves. This is not for all these other people out here, naturalizing people and doing all these other things that they're not supposed to be doing with this information. The mores who study and know what this is, this is our time right now to, to do what we're supposed to do. Trust that this is the time right now, right? A um, couple of things to plug. If you want any of um, my books, you can go to khalifamedia.com. I have um, books on, a, call, a book called Who Stole the Fez? I have a book called Welcome to Canada about the history of Canada. I have um, a book called Nationalities, the Order of the Day, Message to the Pan-Africans, the Rastafarians, the Garveyites, everybody else. I have a collaborative book I wrote with a brother in California by the name of Rami Salam El 
called 77 Amazing Facts of the Moors in honor of J.A. Rogers. And all those could be picked up at khalifamedia.com, C-A-L-I-F-A media.com. And I'm also a hip hop artist. So uh, my music could be gotten at willofallah.com. Right, so there's, there's some free downloadable things there, and there's also stuff that you can buy. With regard to just so, I just put out a new album called um, Iron Sheet 6, um, Open Says MC. This is just a quick verse from the album. Um, Moorish MC fly like my Moorish cape. I'm not a Jew, but Jerusalem has a Moorish gate. <laughs> Dirty Moors on real, call them Moorish fakes. Pull at Negroes' emotions like some Moorish drapes. <laughs> if you really want to know, go to a Moorish meeting. You better have a pen and pad because the active Moors speaking. It's wake up time, you won't find the Moors sleeping. Crescent moon and star in the sky, that's a Moorish beacon. The way I navigate beats, call me Moorish seaman. My nationality, I have the power, Moorish he-man. Moorish turban, a Moorish, don't mistake me for bourbon. Moorish empty master surgeon, not a rapping surgeon. You suburban, Moors are so suburban. To solve the Negro problem, Moorish white man's bourbon. Moors, more black beans conquer. White rice, that's a Moorish plate. Black or more fish on the hook, that's a Moorish bait. Moorish estate before chapter 48, ancestral line. I'll just stop there. Willowallah.com for all the music. Peace to Brother Ali. And all the Moors that's here, all the Moors that's been studying, continue to study. Trust that we're doing what has to be done. Trust that Nova Drali is smiling down from the solar plane on us because we're doing what's supposed to get done. Islam to yourself, Islam to everlasting life, peace and love to all Moors. Islam. Islam. Wow. Give it up again for the brother, Peace right, out. All right, all right. Yeah, I mean, all this is real. I'm going to let um, Sister Sly come up in a minute, but I got a brother, Brother Vaughn. He wants to say something to you real quick. Real quick. Come on up, Brother Vaughn. Give it up for Brother Vaughn Black. I right. appreciate even having the opportunity to be here. Uh, I spent time with a lot of brothers in, uh, in prison. Moors taught me a lot. Uh, able to escape a lot of the you know, ideas that I had about life, I had about religion, spirituality, and the whole nine yards. As a matter of fact, I just talked to some brothers this morning in a radio show, uh, and they asked me, you know, a few questions and we shared some thoughts and just listening to that first brother of freedom okay yeah just listening to him what's your name brother a chef okay a chef okay just listening to that brother uh gave me a great appreciation that um you know there's people out here that uh, are willing to stand up that are not afraid and at the end of the day i found you know that fear is our worst enemy because when I came home in 2009 and I went through all of my situation, they wanted to throw on top of me some expenses that I didn't feel I needed to pay. As a matter of fact, I never agreed to it. So I went through the probation and they put me on probation. I mean, I get, uh, let me on probation. I say let because I didn't know I had to be on it. And uh, they didn't take me in court, didn't attempt to, uh, what do you call it, violate me or none of that stuff. But the judge had other ideas. The judge sent a letter to them saying, bring him in so we can talk about this expenses that he owed. And I know that the judge did it because I went down to, I went down to the courthouse, pulled a file, and saw that, you know, the chain of events. So when I went into court, but before I went into court, I called a brother. He wasn't, he's not a boy, but he's a Muslim that I was in with. And I said, man, I need some help. I said, man, because they ready to take me back in. I don't have this bread that they asked me for. So he said, man, study this and study that. Of course, <laughs> he didn't give me no answers. 
So I had to do what the brother said. Like this brother said, study. You on your own. If you ain't studying, then you know ain't nothing gonna just drop in your mind because really the product of your mind is the things you take into it. So that's what I did. I studied. This was in the end of September 2014, and I had to go to court in December. And by the time I got to that court, I dropped a whole bunch of stuff on them that I really didn't know what it meant. But by the time I went to court, I had enough idea where I can stand there in front of them. It was eight sheriffs, I count them, eight sheriffs in the courtroom for $1,500 that they said I owed that I didn't have, that I was going to jail for that day. I had my mother in the court, I had my uh, fiance, wife to be, and uh, a couple of brothers because I want to have some witnesses just in case they did something crazy. They cleared the whole courtroom out, saved me for last. And I said to myself, man, you know what? I owe them $25 when I look back at this contract. And that's all I'm taking in this court because that's all I really got. My man said, I, I got about four or 500, but I can't pay them. I was like, man, I don't even want that. They gonna lock me up today. Anyway, I went in there and I stood in front of that judge and for 40 minutes, me and him had a conversation that nobody else in that room understood. And they was looking at him like he was crazy. You entertaining this guy? Talking about he not the defendant and all this kind of stuff? No, nah, I ain't defending. I ain't sure. So Y'all just put me there. And he was a nice guy, really, because he entertained my conversation. But at the end of the day, he moved forward because I didn't know enough to stand on my square. I didn't know enough to establish that I wasn't in that jurisdiction. I didn't know enough to establish that I was somebody outside of who they said I was. And if you don't know who you are, guess what? You are who I say you are. So he moved on. I said, well, you know what? Just for the record, I'm going to move because you got all these, these men, these armed men in this courtroom. What, what are you talking about? I said, well, you got guns in here and y'all threatening me and I'm under the rest, so I'm going to move to court. See, because they don't know that on the record. They don't know you're surrounded by a bunch of people intimidating until you say it. I said, so why they stand? I can't even talk, really. And you already moved. Why they standing up behind me chingling his, his keys? That's right. So he moved them back. They ain't leave out, but he moved them back. And I was able to cross-examine this probation officer who never seen me a day in her life, talking about, you know, yeah, you owe this and you owe that. Nah, I don't owe nothing. I ain't agreed to nothing. I said, now look at, the, look, look at that right there, Jan. I owe, based on that, with that say, I didn't say what it was, but it was twenty five dollars of what I had. And after I finished asking her questions and I confused her with my my questions, she couldn't answer them. I said, "Y'all, I rest my case." He made my case for me. He made my case because I went in there one with a suit on. Not saying you got to wear a suit, but you got to look the part. If you're going in the court, if you're going in the court. You had better had a right to call him, or you had better be super sharp with your words and know the law like nobody else. Because if you don't look the part, I go and court four people now. Since that, my whole life done changed. I don't I quit, I was doing computers. I don't even fix computers, build networks, nothing. I quit my job. That's all I do. I go and court four people as trustee. I beat felony cases. I got a case in the feds right now. IRS coming down on. I, I'm going in there. Judge, let me in. But how I do that? Because one, I'm not alerting the public. Like this brother said, it ain't for everybody. Exactly. It's for y'all network. It's for y'all people that's really doing it. Because this stuff ain't for everybody that's out here just gonna make a sham of it. Because they want to beat a case or they want to try to a buy a house or a car and they ain't established nothing. You got to establish yourself. You got to establish yourself up here mentally. You got to establish yourself on paper. You got to put the public on notice. If you don't do that, guess what? Everything y'all trying to do, it ain't going to work. It ain't going to work. You gonna get backlash. We didn't got people money. IRS came and took all the money back. Why? Because they wasn't set up right. You got to set up right. You got to know what you're doing. Because y'all got some powerful people that come through this joint. I, mean, I come over here, I talk to them on the phone all the time. They powerful. So y'all y'all really got to, I say y'all because I'm not a more. And I don't take offense to what the brother said because what the brother said is right. It's just not for everybody. But I study everything. You're a more, bro. Yeah, yeah. You know what? I'm, I'm going to say, I'm, I'm going to take that back because actually, you got your hand up to ask me a question, man? Yes, I do. Okay, go ahead. 
Uh, you said before you go and walk the world and, and speak your speak, talk your talk, mm -hmm. do your thing, whatever, you have to have yourself established. Yes. Now, my question is, what are the ABC rules to be established correctly? Well, the first thing that you have to do, if you really want to be established and, you know, you really want to be outside of their, their world, you got to take yourself outside of their world. So what, what, what got us into their world? What got the, us having the appearance of being their property? Social Security. Your birth certificate ain't it. Your birth certificate is, is a conduit that connects us to their contract, the financial contract. Okay, okay while you tell me, I'm going to go step by step. Okay. Take yourself out of their world, Social Security. You have from birth, you take it to you die. So how do you get rid of that Social Security? What do you do in place of Social Security is insurance. Oh, sure. So That's it's not your number. No, the number is just the number that identifies the, the entity. But the social security policy or your number is attached to a social uh, insurance account. So that insurance is basically <clears throat> guaranteeing that anything that any expense or, or uh, debt or whatever is created by this corporation, this corporate entity that you are claiming not to be, but claiming to be fiduciary of. Because there's only two reasons why you go to jail in any court. One, for contempt of court. Two, for breach of fiduciary duty. Those are the only two reasons you go to jail. People don't realize it. You, can't, you ain't going to jail for nothing else. If I kill somebody, guess what I breached? I'm coming back to you. Let me just make this point. Fiduciary. If I kill somebody, guess what I breached? I breached a fiduciary duty to my fellow man to protect them. If I'm flying down a street 25 miles an hour, the 25 miles an hour, that's not a law. That's an advisory. That's it. This is the system of advice to you that the most safe way to operate on this particular street is to drive your weapon on wheels at 25 miles an hour. So if I'm doing a little over 25 miles an hour, it's called an infraction. But if I'm balling, guess what that's considered? It's considered reckless and total disregard for human life of which you have a fiduciary duty to protect. Now, if I kill somebody not with premeditated intent, I'm going to get second, second degree of negligence, neglecting my duty. So when I go to jail, I didn't go to jail because I killed somebody. I'm going to jail because I breached a fiduciary duty. A fiduciary has to do with what you owe to the next person. And it's the highest level of duty. You ready, bro? Ma'am, I answered your question? Yes. Okay. You ready? I got five more minutes. Okay, so how does that relate to a lot of stuff that we, we trying to defeat? Because most of us, you know, we get into this world because it's pressures that's on us. Some type of pressure. Whether it's pressure from drug use and you know I'm too weak I need help I need I need uh, my creator and I need a brotherhood to lift my mind up from this morass of, of garbage that I've been affiliated with all my life I went to jail first time 11 years old been going in and out of jail ever since until this last time when I went in there read the Bible about four times read the circle seven and read the Quran and read Malcolm X uh, autobiography and the whole nine yards and I just changed everything so I ain't never going back to jail. But still, I had to get my thinking, you know, to another level and raise myself up to another level with intent to maintain that. So what did I have in my situation that was holding me down? Because it wasn't drugs. It wasn't girls. It was finance. It was, man, bread. I'm like, man, man, I don't want to go back to jail, man. Dog, gone, on, man. I got to do something. So I said, you know what, let me, let me learn how I can operate for real. Because they took, tried to lock me up for $1,500. I'm not going back to jail, and I'm not going to be pressured. So we have our reason for why we're in here, you know. Well, everybody has their reason for why they do certain things. But see, what we have to do is whatever we get ourselves involved in, 
outside of even with your spiritual life we need to understand it it's something the bible said wisdom is the prime thing i think it's in proverbs verse chapter two it said wisdom is the prime thing but in all that you acquire acquire understanding because we're doing a whole lot of stuff we're making a whole lot of documents that we are seeing and we're copying what those people did and then when it's time for us to stand on it the judge flipping us over in court Every time they go to school for for mores, trust me. They got classes. Judges got classes they go to for y'all, cause y'all is a, a force to be reckoned with. So whatever you're doing, know what you're doing. Understand it. And as far as dealing with the courts, if you actually go into the courts, understand their language. Stop using this. Uh, this language that they don't understand because then you, you got to fight with them. The number one thing that they use, guess what the number one thing they use? Brother, you, you know what I'm talking about. Plausible deniability. I discharge people houses all the time. I save people out of their, uh, what you call it, foreclosure situations all the time because discharge. Discharge is real. Okay, 19 or 1864, they passed the Currency Act or the Banking Act. In 63, they passed the Currency Act. In 19, 1864, they passed the Banking Act. Section 27 sends all of them to jail. And it's a one paragraph, that one single paragraph in Section 27 of the Banking Act of 1864. I use that, send them to jail, they go running. But the question is, who do you report him to? That's the whole thing. <laughs> the brother dealt with traffic. I, listen, this is the last thing I'm going to say. This is, it, this is it. I was in, last year, Alabama. Keep in mind, all of this really got started for me in 2014 when they said I had to pay them $1,525 and I didn't have a $25. So December, after December, I kept studying because I studied for two months just trying to figure out how I was going to stay on the street. After just getting off the paper, off papers. All last year, I stopped using driver's license. Now, I got a driver's license, but I don't use it, right? Because my driver's license is actually property of a trust that I created because they gave something to a trust that they own. See, everybody in here is operating through a trust you just don't know. But they own your trust. Right? They own your trust. So if I'm going to get rid of this gift that they gave me, it ain't on me anyway. Because I'm separating myself from them. So when they asked me for I never give it to them anyway. I'm down in Alabama. Bloody Sunday. I get pulled over. We was about 30 miles from the Bloody Sunday spot. You know, we're uh, Obama was down there and all the people was on the bridge and all that stuff, Alabama. He had pulled over. And I'm in a car, a van, full of young kids. We was teen it was teenagers, all of them from Southeast. And my man, you know, like, he know I ain't got no license. I mean, you know, I ain't driving no license. You want me to drive, you gonna have a problem. He pulled over. Oh man, come on, man, come on, give me your license. All right, man, I'm not giving them my license. I'm not doing that. So you gonna you gonna deal with this right now. We come. Black car. I'm glad with the black car. <laughs> license registration. I said, I can give you a registration, but I can't give you no license. Wait, hold. What you mean? You you ready to go to jail. It's like, man, you gonna put you gonna take me to jail because I ain't got no driver's license, because I ain't I can't give you a driver's license. I didn't say I ain't have one. I said I can't give you a driver's license. I said, but I can give you a number though. He said, What's the number? So I gave him the number. B four two zero eight five three zero seven one zero seven five. I know my number. Make sure I know. Anytime I get pulled over, then around here all the time, giving that number. They always ask, "Was well, that your driver's license number?" I said, "No, that's Merlin's driver's license number." I said, "But I give you that number so you can know you're not dealing with a terrorist, so you can at least have a semblance of idea of who I am." But I I been gave the driver's license thing up because I'm not a driver. I just go from place to place. It's my right. He looked at me sideways, my man over there, he hide. Oh, <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Let's give it up for Sister Salah. And she's gonna be she's gonna be going to uh, Chicago. Uh, she's gonna she's gonna talk about what she's about to do. Um, Well, I'm, I'm talking about this. Yeah. It's on, everybody. It's on. Uh, it's been a while since I've been um, uh, actually speaking in the class. I started coming back a couple months ago, but um, as many of you may know, my conveyance was stolen, put on the record once again, by um, so called DC. So it's been a little challenging to get out here. But um, I started being able to come more frequently about two months ago or so. And so um, today, and then as well as the 29th, correct, Abdullah, of March, I will be speaking. And on the 29th, I'm going to do a presentation on etymology. And this presentation I will be presenting in Chicago um, the weekend of April 9th to the 11th. And I'll be speaking at the American Association um, of Community Colleges convention. So I submitted a proposal. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So I submitted a proposal. Um, the proposal covered etymology and vocabulary acquisition and how, vocab how etymology can help students learn vocabulary across all content areas, not just studying etymology in your English class but um, you know learning biology or anatomy terms learning terms referring to social social sciences so like in your economics class or your government class um, different terms can be learned via etymology and um, my goal is to have this a part of curriculum not just in the community colleges but um, in pub, well, I'll say in schools, high school, middle school, and elementary school, whether that's public, private, charter, et cetera. So um, this, I did this presentation at Prince George's Community College, I'd say about a year and a half ago, and now I'm presenting it to a larger body um, of teachers, and so I just hope that it continues on and on. Um, just a couple of, of updates. Um, I want to th oh, I want to thank everybody who has been donating uh, towards my trip. So Abdullah put the call out um, to everybody, and people like were donating finance. Somebody, uh, brother Keith in Reston, Virginia, who has KG's Barbershop, he um, got me hotel space. Um, and Brother Mason Bay donated, and Brother Frank, thank you, I appreciate your donation. Um, and so, you know, I just, again, I really appreciate the support that the Moors have given me because I think they recognize from Abdullah's teachings that it's the basis of, of education, it's the basis of instruction, so like, I'm trying to, or I'm going to make it more mainstream than it is at this current point in time, which at one point it was mainstream, um, particularly for European children. And so we are working to get back to that for our Moorish children, because um, it's that's what they're going to need to be able to read and analyze properly. So um, I thank you all for just your support. I really, really do. And um, just a, a couple other updates. Um, I'm working in a high school now, so the last time I spoke, I was in a community college. Um, now I'm at a community college and a high school, so I teach ninth grade English and I teach algebra one, and so I get to use etymology in my classroom. And um, I will have, so when I come back on the 29th, I'll get a chance to present and um, get everyone's feedback on my presentation and what you'll see is some of the the activities that we do in the classroom. So we've done projects. I made a I gave them a project where they had to create games. So they came up with all kind of game boards and card games to learn 
um, roots, prefixes, and suffixes. Uh, recently, this week, in fact, they had a presentation, they had to do a PowerPoint presentation on a root. Give me 15 words with that root in it. Give me 10 slides that have um, the word the word broken down, the meaning of the word, and like either a picture or some kind of um, video, and then they had to create a quiz using those 10 words from the 10 slides. So, you know, they're actively, every week, they get a packet. I create a root word packet for them. So every week they're doing something um, based in etymology. And even there's technologies. I had one of my students say after today, and so, um, again, when I have the, the actual projector, you'll get to see my student um, using an app so everybody loves the cell phone like they're not supposed to have it out but they always have it out and so we try to make it um something that we use in the classroom to their benefit as well right so there are different apps that we have them download like there's one they can do a quiz right in front of you like they it grades it right then and there and they can see the feedback on their phone um, there's another app that can like play videos and different things so i will be showing you all of those in the PowerPoint presentation that I'm doing on the 29th. So again, you guys can give me your feedback and see like all the cool stuff I get to do in my ninth, my ninth grade classroom. And the cool thing about it is um, because I teach algebra one and I teach English, like I have this dual perspective where even though reading and literacy is my passion, I just understand how it's important across the curriculum so the students have to do word problems but like they don't understand the vocabulary like we were doing um we did domain and range we were doing functions the other day so we were talking about domain and range input output um independent versus dependent variable and so they took what we were doing in the english class Oh, I said, well, what's the prefix of independent? Oh, in, what does that mean? It means not, so it's not dependent. Why is it not dependent? And so then, like, it opened the door to really have a deeper understanding of the concept that was being taught. So um, that being said, I gotten a chance to use etymology to help them with their other classes. So they had an activity where they had to break down words from their world history and from their biology class. And so, you know, in the beginning of the year, I told them, this is something that can help you in all your classes. It'll help you with SATs. It'll help you for life. And of course, like they're going to push back and they're like, that's not true. And this is English. And um, like I said, because I'm in algebra and I try to it foster the etymology in that class too, they would get mad and they'd be like, this isn't, this isn't English class, Miss Liebe. So I don't know why you're doing all that. But like they started to see it. They started to really see it once we did that world history and biology activity. And so then they started like picking up on different prefixes and suffixes and roots themselves. So um, it's just a really good like experiment for me to, to see what Abdullah uh, helped foster in me. I get to foster in other students. So um, that's what's been going on. And last update is I have a new website, so I'll write it up here for everybody, but it's pretty easy um, to remember. It's called etymologyrules.com. Um, I also have this as an Instagram. Uh, I don't have it on Facebook, although I have my regular Facebook page, Salabe, and you can see, you can find um, etymology rules on there. And so that is a, it is a budding etymology online program. So I have a couple of lessons. I have um, some blog postings and it's, for right now it's open to the public, right? But once I get it fully completed, like I'm gonna have a password protected because it's gonna be a learning platform, you know, you have to, uh, contribute to our brick and mortar school if you want to partake of the online learning program. So, you know, get it while you can. Um, and I try to update as much as I can. It's, you know, got a lot going on. So, um, those are my updates. Uh, I will be not too long because I know uh, Brother Abdullah has some great things to teach us. 
But I just want to kind of reiterate some things just because I was sitting here listening to the other presenters and also thinking back to last class. And, um, you know, I remember Brother Abdul put us all on the spot and asked us certain questions um, to see where our mental state was at with, regarding more science and just this body of knowledge. So um, I want you to think to yourself, how many mores do you know? Just think about that for a second. Like how many people do you know that are mores? You can't answer. <laughs> Uh, all right, brother, how many more do you know? 20, 25, somewhere around. 20, 25, okay. Uh, you're smiling, so I'm not going to ask you. <laughs> uh, okay, brother, how many more do you know? Three, including you. Three, including myself, okay. Um, how many more do you know? I guess 7.6 billion. Seven point six billion more. That's a lot. That's a lot. That's a lot of more. Why would you give me that response? Why do you say you know seven point six billion? More? I don't even know seven point six billion people, but I know a lot of more. I know so many more that I couldn't even count them. You know, with my hands, my feet, none of that. So tell me why you gave the response you gave. Since we all related, all of us are more. Indeed. So um, I think the, the point that I was trying to make was that um, we're all Moors, right? And more is not just something that we wear as far as say, I'm a part of this organization, or I'm a part of this group, or I'm a part of this entity. More is a nationality. And that word is 100% accurate, precise, um, it perfectly describes what we're conveying when we say more. And that's where etymology comes into play. So many of y'all who've been coming to the class for this long, for a long time know where I'm going with this, but um, nationality. So I would say, what is the root of this word? And to help you, which you probably can identify more easily than the root would probably be suffixes. So if we take the suffixes off, we can get to the root. Is the root carries the most basic meaning of the word, right? It's like with a plant, the roots of the plant carry the nutrients and without the nutrients, we don't have the plant itself. It, Without the roots, we don't have life. Without the root of this word, this word really has no meaning. So let's take, the suffixes give us the parts of speech. They let us know if it's a noun, if it's an adjective, if it's a um, abstract noun versus a concrete noun, like a person or a place, etc. So we're gonna take off the suffixes so we can get to the root. So what do you think the first suffix is? Anyone can shout out. In your lessons again. Nationality, that's my hint. Nationality. So, I T Y, itty, which leaves us with national. What's the next suffix? L. That leaves us with nation. What's the next suffix? Ion. 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 It's so the T-I-O-N pronounces shun, just like if I had C-I-O-N or S-I-O-N, shun. Um, shun, that indicates a noun, an abstract noun. That leaves me with my root, which is? Natural. How many other words do you know that have this root? Natural. Natural. Nature. Native. Native. Did someone say neutral? So that would be N-E-U. So we're looking for the N-A-T. But I think this is a pretty good list. Um, you could say an eight. You could say, um, I want to start, I want, oh, nativity. That was the other one. 
Okay, before I tell you what it means, and those who already know from the lessons don't say, what do you think all these, thi these words have in common? So we can come back to this one because this is what we're really focused upon. Nature is that which is what? Yeah, I it, it, it's natural and it comes from, <coughs> is it artificially made? No. no. So something to think of when you think of this is it, it is born of the elements, right? It comes from the earth, the air, um, think about the planets, nature. Um, natural is just the adjective version of the, of the previous word. Okay, native. If you are native, that means you're a what? If you are, as they say, which is, this is very connotative, so no one in here is really this. But if you're a native Washingtonian, what does that mean? Here. You were what here? Born here. Born here, okay. So your place of birth. Why do I say that's connotative? Why do I say being a Washingtonian is connotative? Who knows what I mean by connotative? Oh, is your hand up? Your hand's up? No? Okay. I'm going to put her on the spot, but I won't do that. Um, okay, yeah, what do I mean by connotative? Yes, ma'am. This was like the modern or slang definition. The modern, the shaded meaning, yeah. the added meaning, right? What's the opposite? Denotation. The denotation, the denotative meaning. So if I say you're a Washingtonian, why is that connotative? Why is that a shaded or a additional term? Yes. Because the truth, it would be uh, an Akashian. That's not the indigenous name. Right, because Washington is not the indigenous name of the land. It would be um, the Nakochonk, which then is translated to the Anacostia. So Anacostia is the indigenous name of DC. Okay. So anyway, place of birth, innate, from birth, nativity. The nativity is the birth. Therefore, what does nat mean? What do y'all think nat means? N-A-T. What's, what's, what do we see consistently in the definitions? The word birth. Yep. And then nativity itself is birth. So nat refers to birth, and from birth, we have the concept of your blood. So nationality has to do with your blood. And so when we say our nationality is that we are Moors, we're saying that is not just, again, an organization that I choose to be a part of, because you don't really choose your blood. You are, you are, you are created from your mother and your father. Like you didn't say, well, without getting too metaphysical, you did not physically choose to have more blood versus physically choosing to be Chinese or to be European, right? That's just you came here and this is what you are. So when we say, how many more do you know? It would be akin to saying how many so-called black people do you know? That was the point of that demonstration. Okay, any questions about that? Okay, good. So, um, you know, that's like my little intro demonstration of why etymology is important, right? Um, certain things that I really want to convey is how to study etymology. And I think a lot of people have asked me about my book. So I have a book that I've been working on for some time. Um, I finished the chapter, it's called All About Prefixes. So I finished that last night. Um, I linked with a brother who is going to be doing the graphics and the layout for me. I just need an illustrator. So if anybody in here can illustrate very well. Um, if anybody here can do like comic or comic book or graphic novel style illustrations in particular, if you know anybody like that, you can shoot them my way. But that's the theme that I want going with the text. So um, that's you know in the works. But in the meantime, things that you guys can do to study on your own. So where are my items? 
I'm actually going to pass this around, but I have, um, this is a set of note cards that I keep. Um, these are just words that, it's not that they have any particular value because I think they're going to be used in um, legal documents or whatnot. It's just words that I need to know in general. I have, a, I have workbooks and I write down the words from the workbooks and I write them on this card. But like I said, I'll pass a couple around because it's a very specific way that I do my note cards and I'll actually put them on the board as well. Uh, let's see. So I'll start here. And so you can maybe just pass them this way to this group and then over here. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, you can pass it this way and then over here. Okay. So on the front side, ooh, can I use these? Yeah, some of these. So on the front side, I have the word itself. So I'm going to use an example that I have in here. And this word will be abominate. So here's the front side. And here's the back. So in the middle is the word, and then it's split into four parts. And here I have the dictionary definition. Here is the etymological breakdown. Here's the denotative meaning, and then here's a sentence. So I do that just so I can have the word stick and I can have a better um, context, a contextual understanding for the word because words by themselves, you know, they do have meaning, but they convey ideas in sentences. So that's why I have the sentence part. And then the dictionary definition will be your connotative and then your denotative is really based off of this etymology. So I'll read abominate. So abominate, the connotative meaning is to detest or abhor. Synonyms would include the loathe or despise. Um, the etymology, so that would be up here. It comes from the Latin word abominari, which means to shun as a bad omen. The prefix is ab, which means away. The root is omen, which means when you take it, trace it down to its Indo-European root, um, it is to announce. And then the suffix ate indicates that it's a verb. The denotation, so that would be this corner right here, is to denounce away, a bad omen. And then up here, my sentence. <laughs> my sentence was, and. Like it's kind of hard for me to come up with sentences that are outside of like my general, like everyday life. Because what's on my mind is what I'm gonna write about. So like my sentences, if you see some of them, they might look crazy. Like these kids are some 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 whatever my vocab word is. Because it's usually the students I write about them a lot. But this one, um, it says traffic tickets are one major cause for ab abomination towards the city. So remember, abominate means to detest or abhor, which means, in other words, to loathe, to despise, to hate. So traffic tickets are one of the major causes for abomination or despise, or people despising the city. I mean, would you disagree with that? How many times have you heard people say, oh, I don't want to get a ticket. I, I don't like going to DC because I don't want to get a ticket. You know, so um, I just use, again, that was my real life. Like I was, I did abominate the area at the time when I got my van stolen. Um, so yeah, this is like a little method I use for study. I encourage you all to do this. So 
take the words that Taj has given you. How many people have seen, have gotten their flash drive um, hooked up, as I say, from Taj's computer? How many people have done that? Say that again. How many people have gotten their flash drive and they got uh, like all that material from Taj? Okay, if you have not done that, by the time, when he comes back next time, make sure you have yourself a flash drive and he will put all of the information that he wants you to study and um, he'll tell you it'll have you studying for five years. Okay. <laughs> Seriously, and especially if you, you know, break down your words etymologically. So he has a list of about maybe 101 terms that you need to know and I suggest you do this with those terms. Using your format. Using my format, yep. And even when you do your sentences, make your sentences ones that might that you might use in a writ. Or that you might use if you are stopped while navigating. Because that way it creates um, the it creates the, the 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 memory in your mind. Right? It's it's imprinting itself into your mind. So then the word becomes more active. There's a thing called active versus passive vocabulary. Passive vocabulary are words that like, you uh, have seen it before, you might be kind of familiar, but you could not readily use it upon demand. Active vocabulary is like, use it every day. Most words that are part of our active vocabulary are of Germanic origin. The words that we really need to work on are of Latin and Greek origin, particularly words that are based in law. Most legal terms are of Latin origin. So that's a little study tool that I suggest everybody use. Again, you know, pass around the cards and kind of get a feel for what I did. And I, you know, I'm going to have more little ideas like that um, as my book comes out and next week when I do the presentation on the 29th. Um, there's another piece I wanted to really convey. Why is etymology important outside of just, okay, because we have to draft writs, right? Etymology is important because it gives you an anchor for language. And I think that as Moors, we have to have a command of the language. Because right now, the Europeans have the command of it, so they're able to influence what they want words to mean. Not what they truly mean, but what they want them to mean. So I have a couple cards. <laughs> no card queen. So I have a couple more cards. And this is actually on my Etymology Rules website. And these cards are just showing the denotation and the connotation of words that we use in everyday language that we would never really imagine have the meanings that they have. So one word um, that I know that we've covered is the word slave. So denotatively, slave differs drastically from what it means connotatively. Um, what do you think the word slave means connotatively? Like in your everyday understanding, what is slave? Twelve years a slave. Pardon? Twelve years a slave. Twelve years of slave. Twelve years of slave. Okay, that's an image that I can. So, if anybody's ever seen that movie, Twelve Years a Slave, the image that I have on my website is akin to the movie where you have a man in shackles and he's bound to the land or a particular service. He is not free. He does not have freedom and choice to do what he would like. He does not have the right to earn finance for himself. This is what people think of. They think of a quote unquote black man in like the 17, 1800s. That's what they think of as, uh, when they think of a slave. And he's bound and he is working on a plantation. But that is not denotatively what slave is. So note card, slave on this side. On this side uh, I have, and I'll draw it on the board. On one side, this one's a lot more simple. So I have the denotative on one side, I have the connotative on the other side. And what's really important, and that I find students, like, I mean, my students are very rambunctious, very noisy. Um, I have to shout to get them to be quiet. 
put it that way. And I have to shout to get them to be quiet. But whenever I start talking about etymology from the sense of I'm going to tell you a narrative about a word, like they all kind of mysteriously get quiet. And like I told them about the word graphite, right? Because graphite, anybody know the root of the word graphite? Graph. Yes, and what does graph mean? Draw. To write or to draw. And so I told them, did you know that what's in your pencil is not really lead? They just call it lead. It's really graphite. I'm like, well, why do they call it lead? And so then that opened the door to um, how it was called black lead. That's what they thought it was. But it was really a different substance altogether. And then the term lead just stuck. And they were like, oh, okay, you know. And then you show them like a little picture or a video, and then they're hooked, right? Um, I did the word choreography, just another aside. So I did choreography, it has the same root, and you know, choreo is to dance. So it's writing, or it's written expression, written representations of dance, literally. So choreography, choreographer doesn't just like make up the dance, they actually write it out as well. Um, and then like in the slide, I had a picture from I'm not a picture, a video from the Black History Month celebration where some of their classmates were dancing. So then they were like, oh, that's Kayla. So then like they were engaged. Because that's what it's all about, is getting yourself, getting your children, getting students engaged. The more engaged you are, the more you're going to remember and like this is going to take root in you. But anyway, I digress. So slave, that's where we were. Slave. So, Again, if you go on my website, you'll actually see pictures of what I just spoke of connotatively, man bound in chains, and then denotatively, um, who knows what I probably have a picture of, because what is the definition, the denotative meaning of slave? Who can tell me? Slovakian? Yes, I do. I have um, someone of Russian, like it's somebody who's from Russia, uh, a Slav. So, that's what's on the card. On this side, connotative meaning. This side, denotative meaning. At the bottom, I go into how it changed. Because a word, when it changes in meaning, it expands. It may become restricted, or the meaning may transfer altogether. So before, it just referred to, and I'm going to read from the card now. So the denotative, a Slav. A Slav um, referred to the Slavic people. And how did they, uh, yeah, I'll start there. They were Slavic people, they were easily conquered because they did not fight aggressively. So these are people who were easily conquered and thus forced into servitude, exactly. Um, the term then became applied to anybody forced into servitude. But it originally, and what it truly means, is a specific group of people who had the characteristic of being servants. So correct me if I'm wrong, Abdullah, but I kind of analyzed that myself to be an expanded meaning, like it became more general. Would you say it was generalized or would you say it was a transfer? Transfer. Why? Uh, transfer of meaning because when you are, just give them general, generalization is when you have the word begins to expand. Uh, for example, example, uh, a generalization would be the word meat. The word the word meat means food. All right, and um, now it went to a generalization. Now it refers to all types, connotatively all types of food, but etymologically meat. Meat means food, generally. All right. Meat means food. All right. Uh, no, I'm sorry. That's restriction. Meat means food. The connotative reference is flesh. Like, um, if you go into the store, this is the meat section. All right. Grapes are food. Grapes, grapes are meat. Nuts are meat. Uh, that's an example. All right of expansion. 
when you took that transfer of meaning, all right, where the meaning of the word takes on a different meaning that doesn't really, that doesn't relate to expansion or restriction. All right. In this case, with with slave, it doesn't relate to either expansion or restriction. It's a it's a meaning that was transferred from mm -hmm. Slavic people. Yeah, I agree. Right? I agree. To every people, everyone right. who's been sort of put in servitude. Right. Because right. it so didn't mean Slavs that were ser in servitude. It meant the nation the, the, the nationality of being yes. a Slav. Yes. There's a characteristic of those people which is they are servants. But that does not mean Slav then automatically means servant. No. no. So I agree. It is definitely a transfer meaning. But that will go on the card at the bottom and then like maybe a little narrative about why or how the term um, was transferred. Even if I can find the year that the word transferred, right? Um, another one, I'll just read this one. I won't write it up on the word. This one is orphan. So I found this to be really interesting and it's very important because um, Taj always tells us that our birth, excuse me, our marriage certificates get filed or get, um, yeah, filed, recorded, re registered where? In the orphan, Department of Orphans. In the Department of Orphans. So then you're like, what is an orphan? What does that have to do with marriage? So what's an orphan? Connotatively. A, a, ba a child with no parents. A child with no parents, absolutely. I'll read from my card. A child whose parents um, or dead, or this is from the dictionary. Sometimes a child who has lost one parent by death. Um, in other words, to deprive a child of parents. What do you think the denotation is? <coughs> so um, you guys should all have an etymolo etymological dictionary. Um, a great one to get is the American Heritage Dictionary with Indo-European roots, but there's also a website where you can access that dictionary. And the website is ahdictionary.com. So when you look that word up, and you trace it through its Indo-European root, the Indo-European root itself O-R-B-H, or means to change allegiance. So an orphan refers to changing allegiance, to pass from one status to another. So they are filing your paperwork in the department specifically mandated to change your allegiance. And allegiance, what's the root word of allegiance? Okay, so what do you think the root is? Let's take off the suffixes. The suffix is one. Suffix coming at the beginning or end? End. So what should I take off? A and C E. What's the prefix? A L. Yeah, we can take that off. L E G. Well, it, it's not the word leg. So the word leg, it has a different um, origin. This is a Latin root. It means to bind. Also, you see it in with the word let, with the root let. It all means to bind. So allegiance is what you're bound towards. Uh, think about the word religion. That's the L-I-G. That also means to bind. From the, Latin, from the Latin word legare, which means to bind. So allegiance is what, where you are bound toward. We are bound to our nation because we're bound to our blood. Because without that blood, we would not have life. But a simple filing of a document is supposed to say your allegiance is now changed. And that's what's on the record. That's what... That's what that indicates, filing in the Department of um, Orphans. So etymology can open the door to things like that, where we kind of just 
listen and take what we're told. We, we, we heard Todd say it and quite a few of you like responded when I asked, right? You guys can give me, you can tell me where are we filing, where are people filing the marriage certificate? But understanding how it denationalizes us is key because when you have a more thorough and deeper understanding, overstanding, and understanding of something, then you know it takes hold. You comprehend it, and comprehend the root is to grasp. So literally, when you you know you get deep with it, then you grasp it in your brain, and you create neural pathways where like you'll never forget that information. So these are like little tricks of the trade that. Um, so when I got when I got pulled over, um, I'm not going to get too deep into this, but uh, a lot of y'all probably know I do astrology readings. So um, I've kind of I won't say I put it on hold. I'll just say I haven't been doing a lot of readings right now because I'm trying to get the book out. But like uh, the readings are my passion. I just love like analyzing and trying to help people navigate, right? And so I'm a Cancer with a Scorpio moon, um, Virgo rising. So uh, my Cancer is like, I hate confrontation. I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. And like the Cancer is the crab. Literally, we do the little dance where we go like from side to side because like we don't like making decisions. We don't like rocking the boat, right? Um, so. I'm not one of these moors that's like, I'm ready. I got my card. I'm ready. I'm ready for a confrontation. I'm ready for the policy and for, like, uh, I don't mean to, sh I don't mean to put you on the spot, brother. No, no problem. But um, Brother Supreme and I, we've been doing a class on Sundays in D.C. Um, started back in July. And Supreme's energy is more like, I'm ready. Let's, let's go. Like, I don't even care. <laughs> and I'm like, well, wait a minute. <laughs> What about this? And what about that? And he's like, nah, I'm ready. So um, I say that to say when I got pulled over um, for like a split second, I was like, dang, what am I going to do? And my sister was in the car with me. Um, and I know her mind was like, oh, hell, what is, what's about to happen? Because she knows like she knows what I study and, you know, what we what we practice. And so when he came to the window it just it just you know flew out because i was doing the exercises so it made it easier so i asked him for his delegation of authority i knew what that meant i didn't have to like fumble and try to think or you know go to my paperwork or a little note card and try to figure out i just knew what to say in the moment partially because of um i would say you know your deep breathing and that holy breath and then in part as well to the study. So people often ask like how, and I, and I, and I listen to people who have gone through situations and beat their cases. And I used to be in awe and I'd be like, wow, will I ever get to that point and whatnot? But I finally realized what it is. And it's just really feeling comfortable with the information and the knowledge. And you can only do that if you feel comfortable with the language that you're using, because you have to use language co to convey this, right? Like it's language that gets you into this mess, and so it's the language that's going to get you out. So um, I don't want to take up too much more time. I will like open myself for any questions, but I doubt there's any really because I didn't go too in in depth on anything. But like I said, if y'all have any questions, um, feel free to ask. Otherwise, I'm going to yield the floor for uh, my brother. Do like, yes, sir. Uh, yes. At, uh, the leg or the two bind, is that kind of like an uh, ends legus? Like to bind the uh, nom de gear to the natural person? Could you say that? Abdullah, what did, can, you, can you answer that? Ends legus. He wants to know if that refers to binding in uh, legus the, the legus and that because yeah, when i hear that, that, that to bind right yeah. so that we can use that also as to binding yes. the nom de gear with the natural person right That's it. and i was going to say that um legus also refers to law so the law is you're bound to the law as well mm -hmm. so that would have been my understanding of legus um, I like what you added, though, um, as far as 
you took it from the legal and you merged it with the etymological, which nine times out of ten naturally go together anyway, right? Okay. Um, but to, you elucidated that. So can you actually say that in the mic just so everybody can hear? Yes. Uh, to end his leg is meaning to bind, uh, would bind the natural person with the nom de guerre person or the corporate entity. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Any other questions? Yes. You made reference to the you know, marriage license, um, and I don't know where you were going with that. Oh, okay. So we talked about in the past, um, Taj, Taj taught us about how um, the marriage certificate and the birth certificate, those are instruments of bottomry. Those are instruments that keep us um, bonded, not, a, I'll say, connotatively enslaved, right? They keep us, we're not free through these two instruments. And the marriage certificate, what happens is when two people actually get a marriage license and a marriage certificate, that then go, is filed in the Department of Orphans. And the Department of Orphans is where their sole purpose is to change your allegiance. And what happens is your children then are no longer yours. And so that's what they're technically an orphan because they belong to the state. They are wards of the state. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So it's not. Yes. So with that marriage license, the two individuals actually become uh, wards of the state. Yes, they do. And that's all, everything they do. Even though you may be looked upon as a child because. Uh, because you're seen as a minority. Yeah. as well yes but whatever you produce it's just like in again quote unquote slavery times as they say right um if somebody owned me and i had a child then they own the child it's the same concept but now this is taking place on paper and the effects are what we see in our communities now, the same thing is for out of wedlock for kids. Does it work the same? Wedlock. You're not married. Well, the birth certificate takes care of that. No. No, but when you're when you have the the marriage certificate, it hypothecates the children before they're even born. That's the contract. Yep. That we volunteer to to autograph. Yes. I said, uh, someone brought this to my attention. Okay, now once you have proclaimed the nationality, you have been in your proper person. Um, does that nullify? Does that have any effect on nullifying any of those uh, contracts that they have with you, such as as a marriage license and the marriage certificates and that sort of thing? Yes, but only if you actively put forth that energy to say that I am now nationalized and thus this, 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 this is no longer applicable. These contracts that I, so it's not like, oh, I nationalize and then everything just disappears, disappears right. right? You have to reverse what has been done, but you can't reverse without nationalizing. So it's more like that's just your first step. Yeah, so then you have to go through your proper procedures to get up, get from under these uh, so-called contracts that they have. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. I have five minutes. Yes. I just wanted to add, um, just keep in mind, remember that contracts have to exist between natural persons or of equal status. So if it's colorable yeah. and it's fraudulent, it's void of initio. So you just need to understand and understand what you have been involved in or human trafficking or whatever the 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 status that you're in so which is subservient or childlike or ward like so make sure that you go back and study what the social security act was or what these things were when it was originally signed by congress and how it's being effectuated today so you don't need to go overboard but you just need to make sure that you study it and know that it's fraudulent because if you are a minor how can you enter into a contract Mm -hmm. All right, thanks.
Yes, ma'am. All right, well, thank you again for your time. Appreciate it. Whatever you want. Oh, I'm dying. Thank you. Um, can I give everybody some flies for the brothers here that we can pass out for uh, the Black History Month program? Y'all mind? Passing, help, passing some stuff out? Out in the streets? Thank you. We're going to bring the brother, brother Bay up here. I do. You have the um, the bell mic or no? I do. Give us like two minutes. Yeah, we're not ready. Check up the I would hope so, yes. You're saying that New Maryland, usually before it was incorporated, using it referred to the land. Is that what you're saying? Well, I'm asking, what was it referred to <laughs> before then? Because you, we can't go visit a piece of paper. We, you can, but we don't do that. You know what I'm saying? All right. Maryland, at no time, mm -hmm. at no time, mm -hmm. at no time, referred to any land. At no time. Then what was it called? I, I, I said, but I got you. Please, 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 I got you. I got you. I don't know the name. I just want to be very clear that Maryland at no time referred to any partial land. At no time. 1847. 1776. At no time does it refer to any portion of the land. At no time. I don't know the land mass, what it's called. Salah, can you help me out? You know the land yes, He wants did. to know. But I want to be very clear to him. At no time did Maryland refer to any portion of the land. At no time. At no time. At no time. Corporation, before corporation, whatever corporation, this is corporation, this is over. At no time does it that need that needs to be made clear. When you walk out this door, I want you to be clear at no time did it ever refer to any portion of portion of land. So, so when we walk out the door, where are we? You want more profits. Now, if you want to particularly... We can do further research, but he don't more profits. We, we can't say you're in Maryland. You can't say we're in Maryland. Right. That's that, that what we can't say. You're in this is more profits. This is more profits. Gotcha. All right? I'm in more profits. All right? They established jurisdiction, but this is how they established jurisdiction. The occupying and colonial powers established jurisdiction by getting you to say you were born in Melbourne, you live in Melbourne, you go to Melbourne, I'm leaving Melbourne. If they can get you to say that, they have that's the way to which they established jurisdiction. If you don't know the land, the name of this landmass, say Moore's Providence. Okay, now I, that's have, all. I have a cousin. In the Moorish Providence, thank you. I love it. Uh, it's connotatively <laughs> referred to as the New York area. Now, if I want to say, "Hey, I'm coming to visit you," and I don't want to use the the terms that uh, in mm -hmm. the case that I am a uh, project or subjugated to sure. the the, uh, the state, mm -hmm. how do I say, "Hey, I'm going right. to visit so and so"? But I'm, I, I, I'm going to the Moorish Providence, where the where the colonial occupying power called New Jersey operates. I'm going to the Moorish province where the colonial occupying power called New York operates. I'm going to the Moorish province where the colonial occupying power called Merlin operates. I'm going to the Moorish province where the colonial occupying power called North Carolina operates. Mm. I know the mouth full, brother. I know the mouth full. Believe me, I know it is. I know the mouth full, brother, brother. As I know it is, brother. But if you want to, if you want to get your land back, fam, you got to be clear because they have done that. They put the, they taught the children, my daughter, most part me, all of us. They have the, the map, right? With the names of the occupying powers, New Jersey, North Carolina, South Carolina, Maryland, Connecticut, so forth. So we've been conditioned from childhood. Yeah. We got to break that. Yeah. We must break that. 
Brother, I don't know any way around it, fam. You want your land back, bro? You got to break that. You cannot refer to your land as New Jersey, Maryland, North Carolina, Connecticut, ETC. You must, this is the most prominent. And the heads, the, those Europeans who are sitting in your seat of authority are substitute beings. They use the title governor. You're the bay. They're the substitute bay who exercises your more sovereignty and your more providence. You must be clear on that, brother. Over, over the more. So when you write, you must write that in rich. You must be clear. No shortcut anything. Because they, they are clever in establishing jurisdiction through language. I must be very clear. All right? You clear on that, bro? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> No, what I wanted to say was, like he was saying before, it was called uh, Maryland or New Jersey or Florida. Oh, you said it. You uh, said it. You said it. No, my understanding from uh, uh, I'm, 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 I'm coming from a book, uh, Lost Tribes and the Promised Land. I uh, this was territory uh, promised uh, to the indigenous people. Uh, by their creator. <coughs> I'm going to stop you there, bro. You said before it was called. Let me stop you. What does it, the personal pronoun it, this, denote? This continent. The land. The land. Right. So before it, it, land, right? Yes. I'm going to be clear. I can't, I'm going to be clear. Before the, 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 this continent. All right. Was a colonialized. Oh, thank you. So that's 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 that's, that's different. Then you're okay. saying two different things now. Okay. Brother, it, brother, I, I, it's very clear because we're dealing with etymology. It's etymology. Oh, I so I'm, I need to stop you. I need to make sure you're understanding what you're saying. Okay. Because we just we we used to be pairing things. We don't, brother. We've been trained. We don't think. I'm not saying you, I'm just speaking, right. just that. We don't think, we take on catchphrases, mm -hmm. all right, and we parry them. Mm -hmm. we, we speak connotatively. And this is how they, what? Maintain control of us. This is how they establish jurisdiction because they, they indoctrinate us with the language so that they can what? They maintain jurisdiction and control of us. All right, so before before the Moorish land was colonized and occupied, go ahead, by the Europeans. <laughs> All right, go ahead. It was considered to be a uh, promised uh, territory. Uh, it, it is a promised territory. It is our, it is our land. <coughs> it, no, just um, coming across what he was uh, coming, I was saying mm -hmm. earlier. It's our land. We, but I'm saying before they occupied, and colonized, we were already, we already had, we had self government. The Moors, how was the Moors flag? Over 10,000 10, 10, 10, years. You can't have a flag without a what? Oh. Mm -hmm. we, <coughs> we brought them in, in 1777. Mohammed Ibn Abdullah recognized the United States. We brought them into the League of Nations. All right? France did not recognize them until 1778 when they formed an alliance with France in 1778. Prior to that, in 1777, we recognized them. We brought them as it was, it was Muhammad Ibn Abdullah who gave favor and protection to the United States that brought them into the League of Nations. And, that, and as a result of that, France was able to form an alliance with the United States in 1778. Brother, we are the mother. We are the authority. We are the imperial potentates. We are the sovereign grand commanders. We are the illustrious. We are the royal monarch. We are the nobles. We are the babies. We are the white people. We are the free white people. We are the American. We are white people. White. We are white American. All right? That's who we are. 
White power. They're not Americans. They're not imperial politics. They're not the sovereign. Yes. They're not white. They're not white America. They're not white. They're not free white person. They're not imperial potentate. They're not royal monarchs. They're not sovereign grand commanders. They're not illustrious. They're stolen your title. Never. That's what gives them the power because they keep calling them that. Mm. Don't call them that. Mm. Never call them white. Mm. Never call them American. Never call them whiteies. Never call them free white person. Never call them illustrious. Never call them nobles. They're not that. Never call them Jews. Never call them Christians. They're not that. They're stealing your title. And what they do is they create corrupted, connotated meanings to which to do that. That's what they do. So you're going by the connotative meanings. American and United States citizen. American, not your born citizen of the United States. American, European descendants of descent, certain Europeans. American, descendants of European settlers. No, American means natives. <coughs> America means Aboriginal. America refers to the native people and Aboriginal indigenous people in the land. George Bush ain't that. Hillary Clinton ain't that. Al Gore ain't that. Oh, oh, they got you thinking America means United States citizen. That's why. So does she. So does she. So does she. She's perpetuating the lie. Nowhere in here does she rewrite American means Moors. She's perpetuating the lie. So she's giving you all this law and stuff, but you still walk away thinking American refers to Europeans. I'm telling you right now, the most powerful thing she could have done now this book got some good information now. And she had written here on the back, American means more. That, is, that would be more powerful than anything she's written in this book. That one sentence, one sentence out of, <coughs> one sentence, I'm, 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 I'm telling you, one sentence, American means more, will overshadow anything she writes in this book. Why? Because it now puts you in the proper frame of mind. She's perpetuating the lies. And I'm challenging them intellectually. Not just standing up here in the class when we're talking about massive distribution. It must challenge them. And I was telling we must write, we must distribute, we must market to a larger audience. I will be going to my first, I will be a vendor at my first Masonic conference in May. I've done, spoken to five Masonic lodges. I'll be going, I will be going to Masonic lodges as a vendor throughout the country. Book fairs, Christian, church conferences, you name it. All right? We must reach a larger audience. I will be going to European events. Most of you, our Europeans will buy my book. <laughs> All right, as I said before, Moors and Masonry is, mar is being marketed on the Masonic Facebook page. Masons all over the world are, view are, are seeing my book, book cover flyer. So I'm talking about a global marketing. Ken and I was talking about that. Ken will help me. All right, Ken is connected with a group of uh, people who can who deal with marketing, so they're gonna help me. I got Black and Nobel with one million views on his website, RV Bank, OriginalMason.com. All right, so I'm talking about worldwide, so I can help brothers and sisters who write to get the information out. All right, any questions? Um, Where's the mic? Burn it up here. Really, I, really, I just well, really, I just want you to complete what we started here in the analysis of that term, American state. We looked at American estate, but can we break down citizen? Mm. Oh, yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes. Oh, yes. 
We must uh, analyze citizen. All right. Let's see what we got. <clears throat> All right, let's first, let's first, we break, what I did was I, I explained to you what she defined as American state citizen. What, what Anna, Anna Von Retz, what she defines, she defines American state citizen as the inhabitants of the domestic 50 states. And she already know what she refers to as the domestic 50 states. That's how she's defining it. All right? She's not defining it the way I am. She's not all right, she's making it the way American. So, so state citizen. Domestic. Ten minutes, I do. Ten minutes? Yeah, she's defining, Anna is defined, she defines American state citizen as the inhabitants of the domestic 50 states. That's how she's defining American state citizen. All right, we already know that American does refer to the 50, the domestic 50 states. All right, so we have national citizens. The government is Morocco. Morocco has a dual national seal. On the back of the Federal Reserve note, reserve note, what they call the falsely called the one dollar bill, which is non unconstitutional, non non redeemable. As you have the pyramid, which is the mother side, and you have the eagle, which is the daughter side. So it's a do national seal. So that the nationals are Moors. Moors are the nationals. So you have Moorish nationals, all right? Moorish citizens. George Bush is a Moorish citizen. Al Gore, Moorish citizen. Hillary Clinton, Moorish citizen. Nancy Reagan was a Moorish citizen, all right? Moorish national, Moorish citizens. Moorish nationals, Moorish citizens. You cannot be Moorish citizens, why? Because you're what? Moorish nationals. You're, you're the Moorish nationals. You're the sovereigns. Mm. All right. George Bush is a Moorish citizen. Mm. Meaning that don't mean he's more a more descent. Right. All right. So we talk about citizenship. Right. All right. That you have Chinese <laughs> Chinese citizens. Two different statuses. They're not interchangeable. Do not, they're not interchangeable. Chinese and Chinese citizens are not interchangeable. Believe me, boy, you say they'll cut your head off. They'll cut your head off. Play that game. They'll cut your head off. All right? These are the nationals. These are, this is sovereign power. All right? Chinese citizens, based on the naturalization law to China, all right? And we'll let you know how one becomes a citizen, all right, of China, based on the naturalization laws, all right? Chinese citizen of French descent, Chinese citizen of Irish descent, Chinese citizen of Polish descent, Chinese citizen of you know Nigerian descent. All right, but the Chinese are what by blood, ancestry, lineage, Moorish national, blood, ancestry, lineage, consanguinity, descent, pedigree, parentage, more citizens become more citizens by what the naturalization laws of Morocco. All right, that's the difference. Now, you know they're not breaking it down that they refer to what? United States citizen. Right, right, right. But we must break it down like this. Mm -hmm. We the sovereigns. We can we keep allowing them to set the tone. Honor Von Retz. Honor Von Retz. <laughs> American Republic. Colon. United States of America. Not, please. Okay. I have a question. <coughs> yes. So then, you cannot be an American state citizen. No. But can you be, can, not us, but can a person be an American citizen? Oh, uh, 
No, it's this American. You know that the American. Good question. Is more, more. Mm -hmm. more, more American and more interchangeable. Good. She, uh, thank you for that. American and more interchangeable. So yes. But that's the name of the land. It, yes. It's like you said, Chinese citizen. <coughs> right. You can be an American citizen. Yes. Because um, citizen etymologically it refers to where you rest your head, where you lay. Um, when you t break it down to its Indo-European this, this, this is political. All right. National has a much broader meaning. All right. Much broader than citizen. And and, and it, it refers to the sovereign power. All right. Nationals. All right. Citizen is a political construct. All right. That is that is very that's much limited. And the citizens is bestowed upon those who are foreigners to the land. All right? Yes, okay. So, so if to be a national means to be a sovereign, yes. does a citizen mean you are subject? Is it the same kind of relationship? Well, all right, let me, let me all right. And if not, what's the difference between subject? Well, let me explain citizen. You say citizen means sovereign, all right. The small citizens <coughs> will come under constitutional protection. All right, they have a nationality: Dutch, French, Irish, German, Nigerian, Polish, so forth. All right, they have nationality based on the naturalization laws. We have, it has to be based on the naturalization laws of Morocco. Let you know what how they can become citizens. All right, and by once they are adopted into the national family. They are, what, afforded constitutional protection, all right? They are an adopted child mm -hmm. under our constitutional law of power, whereas we are the what? Yeah. All right. So we are, so we have, all right, that's your daughter right here, all right? She's not adopted. That's your daughter, mm -hmm. all right? So she has, by birthright, she has rights to what? She is, she's the what? Heir apparent. She has rights to what? The inheritance. Mm -hmm. Right? If you adopt a child, all right, well, that adopted child doesn't have the same rights as, wouldn't have, wouldn't have the same rights as Gabriella. That adopted child, you wouldn't have the same rights as Gabriella. They're not the same. They don't say they're the same. By blood. That's, their, that's blood. So there's a blood connection. The adopted child is no blood connection. Right. All right? right. right. So, so this is blood here. We're looking at blood. All right? Adopted child. Adopted children. All right, so let me do it subjects. All right? Let me explain subjects. All right, let's say that we are at war. And we defeat England. Because this would be things to happen like this really happened. I mean, I, you know, I'm not making we defeat England. Alright? So we subjugate England to Moorish law. And the and the the former citizens of England now become un, are now subjugated under Moorish law. They will be subjects. They're subjects. Alright? Peace. All right, so I want to thank you again. Thank you. Do I have uh, everybody's email? No. no. Yeah, make sure you have it. Yeah, make sure y'all sign. Put your email down.